Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. In this video, we're going to look into A-Level Chapter 8, Electrical Quantities. And this is the word cloud that shows you all the keywords that we'll be learning in this chapter. And before I begin, again, do subscribe if you haven't already. This will be the only favor that I ever ask from you. Thank you. Now let's look into the chapter outline. The first one will be circuit symbols. So I'm pretty sure that you all are familiar with electrical circuit symbols, but you might not know that they are under this system called IEC. So this commission here ensures consistent and universal communication in electrical engineering. It ensures that everybody is using the same symbol for the same component so that communication can be done more easily. So these are all the symbols that you need to know. All right, now let's look into what current actually is. I'm going to break it down into the very inner side of what current is. What actually happens in the wire is that there are a lot of conduction electrons in the wire that are initially bound to the atom. But once they got enough energy to break free, then they will start to move. And when these electrons move, that's when we have current. Electrons will move from the negative terminal to the positive terminal. And you might be wondering why current move from positive terminal to negative terminal. And to, to cut it short, it's due to historical reason. Do try to figure it out yourself if you are interested. But just remember this, electrons flow from negative to positive terminal, current flow from positive to negative terminal. Now let's look into the concept of charge carrier. Charge carrier is just a particle that carries electrical energy. And in our example here, our electrons, they are the charge carrier because they carry the charge. But in other materials such as liquid or gases, charge carrier can be the positive or negative ions. But in this video here, we're just going to focus on electrons as the charge carrier. And the amount of charge each charge carrier carry, especially for electrons, will be quantized. Quantized means that these charge exists in discrete indivisible unit. So what do I mean by that? This means electrical charge cannot take any arbitrary value. It can't just take 1.8 times 10 to the power of negative 19 Coulomb. It has to be in the multiple of 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 19. So the next value, it can't be 2, 2.5. It can only be 3.2, 4.8, and 6.4. So this is what quantized means, the charge of one electron. So that means you cannot have random values. An elementary charge here refer to the fundamental unit of electrical charge carried by a single proton or the negative of this value for an electron. And to make one coulomb, you will need this amount of electrons. We have talked about how this electron carry charge. Now we can talk about current because current is just the flow of electrons that carry charge. So if you look at the formula of current here, it's just how much charge pass through a point per unit time. So when you talk about how much charge it's basically just how much electrons because it's electrons that are carrying the charge and the unit is ampere. So let's solve a very easy question. You have a charge of 240 over a period of two minutes. So I have to convert this to second, which will give me two ampere. So that's how you apply this formula. And there's another formula for current that you have not learned in IGCSE physics. It's this one, I equal to NAVQ. N stands for number of density. It is the concentration of charge carrier per unit volume. A is the cross-sectional area of the wire. Mean drift velocity is how fast they move. I'll explain more of that in a while. And Q is the charge on each charge carrier. So mean drift velocity is something that I will talk about. Now, how do we derive this form? So now let's break it down into that one by one. So to calculate the amount of current you need, how many electrons are there? So I can do that using number density multiplied by volume because number density is the amount of electrons in per unit volume. So if I want to know the number of electrons, I just multiply the two quantities together, which will give me N times A times L. So A times L, it will be the volume here. So you want to calculate the total charge carried by all the electrons. So what you can do is to multiply the number of electrons by the electrical charge. So it will do NAL multiply by E, stand for the electrical charge. And then we know that to calculate current, you can do charge divided by time. So I'm just gonna let NALE divided by time and then just rearrange them. So now we also know that velocity is equal to distance over time. And distance here is the distance that electrons travel from this point to this point, which, which means it's L. So L over T can be display, replaced with velocity V. So I'm now in NAEV. So we know that E is just the charge. So I can rearrange the equation and I would have gotten NAVQ, which is the formula that I'm trying to derive here. So these are some steps. It's not very complicated. It's just 
that you might need to memorize how to go from step one to step two to step five. Now let's look into a work example. They provide you with the cross-sectional area. What's the current? What's the number density? What's the charge? And they want to know what's the mean drift velocity of the electrons. So again, you already know the formula. You just make velocity the subject and substitute the relevant value and you would have gotten the mean drift velocity of the electrons. So you can also do a unit consistency to check whether this formula is indeed equal to current. So just break it down into unit for each quantity and multiply them together. You will find out that the unit for current is C per, per second, the amount of charge per second, which is exactly what we want current to be. So that's how to prove that this formula is indeed the correct one. All right, now let's look into some factors that will affect mean drift velocity. But what exactly is mean drift velocity? So initially, electrons are loosely bound and they can move around, they call it conduction electrons. But when uh, we connect a cell to the circuit, the electric field will drive these electrons to move around. And as they move, they will collide with fixed matter ions, which impedes their motion. And despite this, they acquire a small net velocity in the direction of electric field, which contributes to the overall electric current. So there are a few factors that could affect how fast they can move. And the first one is current. The more current you have, meaning more charge is being pushed through the conductor, the mean drift velocity will be faster. And the area will also affect it. A larger cross-sectional area means that there are more electrons per unit volume, meaning each electron doesn't have to move that much. So density is the same. The higher the density, the lower the mean drift velocity, because if there are more electrons to carry the charge, the electrons doesn't really have to move that fast. So here's an application of semiconductors. They have low number of density charge carrier compared to conductors because only a small fraction of their electrons are free to move. So if you learn computer science, you will know that computer science work by zero and one. And with semiconductor, what it's saying here is that it allows the voltage to be controlled and therefore they are able to represent binary in computer science. Now let's look into voltage. We have talked about current. So voltage is the potential difference between two point in circuit. But what is potential difference? Potential difference is just how much energy is being converted to other form as a unit charge move from one point to another. The way I like to phrase it is how much work is being done to move one column of charge. So the more work is being done, the more charge is being moved, right? Usually in electrical appliance, they will tell you what's the voltage of that device. Okay. So one thing about voltage, we have learned this in IGCSE, is that the potential difference across multiple components in a series circuit is equal to the potential difference across the power supply. 15 plus 15, you got 30. Now, something very similar to voltage is the concept of EMF, is the total energy supplied by the source. Sometimes it can be battery or power supply. And the only difference between EMF and PD is that P EMS is usually referred to the energy supplied by a source, whereas voltage it refers to more towards the energy loss in the circuit itself. Now that's voltage. We didn't go through a lot of that because we have more chapters on that in the future. And now let's look into resistance. Resistance is the measure of how much a component opposes the flow of electric current. Now, different materials will have different resistance. And one way to phrase resistance is the ratio of potential difference across the component to the current, meaning how much work needs to be done to move one current. And if it's very high, it means that a lot of voltage is needed to move one ampere of current. Yeah. So let's look into some work example here. If a current have three ampere, 24 volt, what's the resistance? We can use the formula V equal to IR. So you just substitute the value, you'll get eight ohm. Another question. So now you have V and you have R. Let's find out the current, the same formula, you would have figured out that is five ampere. Now let's look into power in electricity. We have learned about power in chapter five, but in electricity is a little bit different. Now let's look into how to derive the formula power equal to voltage times current. So first I have the voltage formula here, work done divided by column. I re rearrange them. I have the formula of current ready. I also have the formula of power ready. So power is equal to how much work is done per unit time. But I know that work can be equal to voltage times the amount of charge here. So I'm just substitute inside and then I simplified it into V times the amount of charge per unit time, which is exactly the formula for current. And I substitute current into it. They have to know all these different formulas to derive P equal to VI. So we have two more formulas in electric circuit. So by using P equal to VI, we can derive two more formulas for electric city. The first one is I square R, which is used to calculate energy loss. So you have P equal to VI, 
you just substitute the value of v into this equation, you have i squared r. And again, p equal to vi, and substitute the value of i, which is v equal to r, into this equation, we'll get v squared over r. So you'll be using these two equations for the following questions. So let's solve it. So a smartphone charger supplies a current of 2 ampere to a voltage of 5 voltage. Calculate the power, I can use the formula p equal to vi, just substitute the value into the equation. And next one, calculate the power loss, so 25 ampere and ohm. Remember I told you that for car power loss, we usually use the formula i squared r. So again, nothing hard, you just substitute the value into the equation. Next one, you have voltage, you have power, calculate the resistance. That's when you can use another formula that de we derive. So depending on what quantity you are finding and what is the known quantities you have, you might have to use different formulas. So you have to memorize each and every formula here. Now, here we have an, a bit of explanation. We typically use I squared R when analyzing power loss. V squared R is used to calculate power in the circuit when voltage across the resistor and its resistance are known. So make sure you know which formula to use depending on the context. So last slide of the day, energy transport. Because P is equal to VI, and we also learned in chapter five that P is equal to work done divided by time. So technically we can let them equal to each other and then work done will be equal to VI versus the change of time. So energy can be calculated using VI T. So I have a question here. The voltage is 240 and P is 10 for three hours. Calculate the total energy consumed by the heater. So I can calculate by substituting all the value that I have V I T. I do have to convert this into second because that's the SI unit. So, and then you will have gotten the final answer. And that's the end of this chapter. It's just an introduction to all the electrical quantities and electrical formula you, you need to know. We'll have more chapters like that soon. I shall see you in the next video. Goodbye.